of you who don't know, Ladies Learning Code is a not-for-profit organization. We run, we run workshops for women uh, and men who want to learn beginner-friendly computer programming skills in a social and collaborative way. Uh, we started in July of 2011, so we're about nine months in now, and a little more than 800 women and men have participated in our workshop so far. Um, so today I wanted to tell the story of how I ended up uh, leading an organization called Ladies Learning Code, even though I have no background in technology and also no background in education. Um, and it's sort of a personal story about uh, how things have happened for me over the past few years, and I'm hoping that I can inspire people to uh, keep pursuing their dreams, because uh, you should be able to have fun every day. So the lives that we live, I think, are really the culmination of millions of tiny decisions that we make. And, uh, you know, when I think back to my life, there are so many different things that in a moment I made a decision and it took me in a totally different direction. And so I'm going to share some of those decisions with you today. Um, this is one branch of my life, so I'm focusing more on sort of education and like the career side of things. But when you think about it, you know, every, every area of your life, there are decisions that you're making that are resulting in different things like... You know, that time you stayed at a coffee shop and you met a stranger and it ended up being a relationship for you. So uh, this is a little bit about me today. Uh, I'm the founder of Ladies Learning Code. We also run a March break camp for girls. We just had that earlier this month, 40 girls between 11 and 14 learning how to hack for a week. And we also have a summer camp coming up in July and August, so stay tuned for more info. I work for Mozilla as well, doing a project uh, about getting youth into programming. Uh, that's for boys and girls. Whatever. Um, so Ladies Learning Code was inspired by Pi Ladies. Uh, it's a workshop that I attended in Los Angeles last May, uh, where I got the chance to learn Python from a bunch of women who were dedicated to teaching beginners about the language. And if I hadn't had this experience in May 2011, Ladies Learning Code wouldn't exist, because I came back to Toronto super inspired and wanted to start something similar here. Uh, the reason I was in LA cause I, was because I had a super crappy job, so crappy. I was actually like a personal assistant, um, and I ended up in LA for a few months and decided to make the most of it by going to a programming workshop. Um, so the first job I had when I graduated was absolute garbage, so for anyone feeling that, like, don't worry, there's a way out. Um, the reason I had that crappy job is because I moved back to Toronto in May of 2010, and... Uh, like needed to find a job. And when you need to find a job, you sort of take what you can get. So I ran into somebody on the street who I'd formerly worked with. She put in my name at her company and I ended up working there. The reason I ended up in Toronto in May of 2010 without a job was because I dropped out of grad school. And I love saying it because it sounds so badass and awesome now. Um, but at the time it was a really tough decision and uh, it was mostly because the program just wasn't a good fit for me and wasn't really where I was, saw myself heading for my life and I realized now that was a really, good, a really good decision. The grad school I went to was actually in China. I lived in China for about uh, 10 months going to grad school in a small city called Xiamen in the south of, near Taiwan. And uh, that was sort of my first post-university experience, uh, living by myself in a city where nobody spoke English and trying to make my way around learning about a Mandarin as I went. And the reason I ended up in China was because uh, I had this awesome experience on exchange in Hong Kong. Uh, for my last semester of university, I went to Hong Kong uh, for five months, and we had the greatest time. It was super interesting, and I just decided, you know, I had a full-time contract to come back to in Toronto, but I wasn't ready for it, and so I decided to stay in China. I actually got a full scholarship. The reason I went to Hong Kong is because of Sarah's clash. And uh, this is her, she'd probably kill me if she knew that I was doing this in a presentation. But uh, I met her in early 2006, and I idolized Sarah Sklash. She was two years ahead of me. She was in Ivy, which is the program that I graduated from. And she decided to go to Hong Kong on exchange. Seeing all those photos on Facebook made me sign up. Sarah Sklash and I met through Kappa Alpha Theta. Uh, it's a sorority, one of five sororities at Western. And uh, I joined in early 2006. Could have joined any of them, any of the five. Chose Theta, and that's how I met Sarah Sklash. So really, it all boils down to one moment, and I'll wait for it. <laughs> this is so good. There we go. So this all boils down to a decision I made as a child to watch Legally Blonde, which uh, made me want to join a sorority, and so when I went to Western, I did. And uh, it seems like, you know, it seems ridiculous, and seems like nothing, but those moments can sometimes stay with you. And I, I sort of say it like, I mean it to be funny, but it's true. You don't know how much impact something you're choosing to do in a moment can have. 
And so, you know, if it hadn't been this path, it certainly would have been something else, and I'm sure it would be interesting too, but I find it really fascinating to think back to, you know, how did I get here today? And it's really the culmination of all of those crazy and interesting decisions that I made over the years, even though some of them were not significant at all or didn't seem so at the time. So a million tiny decisions is how we're making our lives. And uh, the decisions we're making going forward are the things that are going to determine what happens to us over the next 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 years. Um, and I find that exciting and I find it sort of amazing and I also find it terrifying because you just never know if you should have stayed at a coffee shop for an extra five minutes because you would have met somebody really interesting or whether a job, career, a job change is the right choice now or not. And it's only in hindsight, really, that we can tell whether something was cool or not cool, but I can't help but think about what I would be doing today if I hadn't had that experience at the Pilates workshop in May of 2011. And so these decisions are really, really fascinating to me. The fact that everyone's here tonight has made the decision to come here tonight. You know, you never know what might come out of meeting someone new. And uh, I think it would serve us all to be uh, like sort of amazed by the fact that this is how things happen and how lives turn out. And just a couple ideas for uh, making the most of it. Be present and do things on purpose and reflect and be amazed about the fact that our lives are unfolding in these ways and that you know we are in control, but there's also a little bit of serendipity to the things that happen to us and the way that our lives unfold. I think that's all I have to say, so thank you everybody.